Welcome back everyone. In this lecture we're going to discuss ANOVA and the F distribution. This is going to be a relatively short lecture just introducing ourselves to a new distribution. We just finished talking about the T distribution and we saw how it was a derivative of the Z distribution. The F distribution is just the next step in the statistical distributions that we need to cover for this semester. In this particular lecture we're going to talk about what is ANOVA what is the F distribution, as well as introduce you to some necessary vocabulary that will help you as we go through different statistical tests using ANOVA. The reading for this particular lecture is chapter seven from the fourth edition of your course textbook. So let's go ahead and get started. Next slide. So first off, what is ANOVA? ANOVA is the acronym for Analysis of Variance. We use ANOVA when we're comparing means of three or more groups. So in our last series of lectures, we talked about the T distribution. And in the T distribution, you're comparing two groups. So whether it was two independent groups, say maybe it was property offenders versus violent offenders, or men versus women, or if it was a paired T test and you were comparing the same group of individuals on two different measurements, then we could use the T distribution, but we were limited to only being able to compare two groups. What happens when we want to compare three or more groups to each other? So for example, maybe I want to measure sentence lengths and see if there's a difference across property offenders versus violent offenders versus drug offenders, where we have three different groups. I can't use the T distribution. I need to find a new test. That's where ANOVA comes into play. And then the ANOVA is directly tied into a new distribution called the F distribution. And the F distribution is a probability distribution that utilizes variance. And there's gonna be two types of variance that we'll talk about in more detail as we proceed through this lecture. Those are what we call between group variance and within group variance. So just to make sure we're all comfortable with this, I keep saying the word variance. F distribution is a distribution utilizing variance. ANOVA is analysis of variance, but yet I started by saying that ANOVA is used when we're comparing the means of three or more groups. That's true. We are going to be looking for differences across means, but sort of the behind the scene work that's going on statistically is we're going to be looking at the ratio of different types of variance. And that's why that term variance is going to come up to us. So before we move on, let's take a look down at the shape of the F distribution down at the bottom of this slide. You'll remember both the Z distribution and the T distribution have that nice bell-shaped curve with negative values, positive values, and a mean of zero. Well, if you look at the F distribution, you'll notice it starts at zero, has a very steep climb, and then it just sort of tails off. The way that I typically like to think about it is the F distribution kind of is somewhat similar to just being half of the Z or the T distribution. All the values are going to be positive. So why are all the values positive? Well, because the statistics behind the F distribution are variance. It's an analysis of variance. And variance, you may recall, if you think back to the beginning of the semester, is a squared value, right? So if we have the standard deviation, that was S variance was s squared so whenever you have squared values you're never going to have negative values and so that's why when you see an f distribution it sort of looks like just sort of one big hump and then it sort of tails off to the positive side so let's take a little bit closer look at some other descriptions that might help us to understand how variance plays a role in the f distribution and ANOVA let's move on to the next slide as I've been talking about, there are two important types of variance that are part of ANOVA. The first is called within groups or within subjects variance. Those two terms are used often interchangeably. So within groups variance. And then there's a second type of variance, which is known as between groups variance. So the purpose of this slide is just to give you a little bit of an introduction into what's, what exactly are these and how can we sort of conceptualize them. Let's talk about within groups variance first. This is the variance that exists within each group or condition. So let's look at study number one down here in the chart. In study one, let's imagine that I have three different groups. I have violent offenders, I have property offenders, I have drug offenders. 
In my sample, I have five people in each one of those groups. So a total of 15 people, five violent offenders, five property offenders, five drug offenders. And for each one of those individuals, I measure the number of prior arrests that they had. So that's what the numbers are gonna represent. So looking at the violent group in study one, you'll notice that all five individuals have a value of three. They all have three prior arrests. If I look at the property offenders, all five of those property offenders have four prior arrests. And finally, looking at the drug offenders, all five drug offenders have six arrests. So if I were to compute the means for each one of those three groups, you'll see that down at the bottom of that column where we have the means of three, four, six. Not too hard to conceptualize there. So why is this important about variance? Well, within groups, variance is looking to see, do we see variability within a particular group? Not across groups, but within a group. And in this case, there is no within groups variance in study one because all the violent offenders are the exact same, all the property offenders are the exact same, all the drug offenders are the exact same. But there is another type of variance that does occur in study one. There is this second type of variance, which is that between groups variance. That is the variance existing across or between the groups. How do we analyze that or conceptualize that? Well, we compare the means. So you'll notice in study one, within each group, they all look the same. But across the groups or between the three groups, there is a clear difference. So there's within group variance, or sorry, there is no within group variance, but yes, there is between group variance in study one. Let's move on to study two, which is the darker one. In study two, once again, same concept. Imagine we have three different types of offenders, we have five individuals within each group, and we measure their number of prior arrests, and we have it listed. So for study two, our violent offenders, we have one person with, under violent, we have one person with three prior arrests, one with four, one with five, one with two, one with one, and we can go through that for each test. Here, in this particular study, in study two, we clearly do see within group variability. So within the violent offenders, not all of them are the same. So there's variability within that group. Same thing with the property offenders. There's variability within that group and the same thing with the drug offenders. So in study two, we see how the example of how within group variability comes into play. But when we look at the second type of variability, that between groups variance, you'll notice when we look at the means at the bottom of study two, even though there is variability within the groups, the means are all equal to three. So we would say there's no between groups variance. And then finally, in study three, this is more the real world situation where we have both within group variability, not everyone's the same in each group, and we have between group variability. We can clearly see that there's a difference between the means. So why is this important to statistical analysis? Well, What's going to go on behind the scenes in an ANOVA test or when using the F distribution is we have to look at the ratio of that within group variability versus the between group variability. And if my focus of analysis is wanting to know, is there a significant difference in, say, number of prior arrests across these three different types of offense groups, then I want my between group variability to be big and I wanna limit my within group variability. And you may recall this ties back to when we talked about power. And remember one of the factors that influenced power was variability. The more variability you have within a group, that lowers power. And then another thing that influenced power was the size of the effect. That, as we're gonna see on the next slide, is the between groups. So the effect, the larger the effect, the more power. So that. We want more between group variability, and we want to see lower within group variability if we're gonna have a significant outcome. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next slide. So on this one, we talk about partitioning the variances, and that's kind of what I started getting into in the previous slide, but let's go into a little bit more, more uh, um, I don't know, detail about it. So an F test, analyzes the ratio of within groups variance versus between groups variance. 
And so as I introduced on the previous slide, within groups variance is actually, for most of our ANOVAs, that's bad. That's the air variance, or sometimes people just call it the noise, like static on a radio or something like that, or on a TV. Um, so that within groups variance is not gonna help us to get a significant outcome, but we have to take it into account in any particular study. Then we have the between groups variance. The between groups variance is the good stuff. That's the effect. We want, if we want to find a significant outcome, we want to see a larger amount of between group variability, and that's often referred to as the effect. So at the bottom of this slide, we look at not a literal formula for the F statistic, but actually just a conceptual formula for the F statistic. And what it does is the F statistic conceptually in the numerator takes all of the within groups variance, that's the air variance, adds the between groups variance, that's the effect, the good stuff, and then it divides it by simply the within groups variance in the denominator. And if you can think about that, if there is no effect, if there's no between groups variance at all, the value of F is gonna be approximately one. Right? You take within groups variance, whatever the value happens to be, divide it by itself, that would give you a value of one. And that's why even though on that F distribution we saw a couple slides ago, even though it starts at zero, the peak and where the action really happens is at one. Um, and so with an F, you usually think of an F statistic of being one or greater. And how does it get greater than one? Well. If, as we have more and more between groups variance, looking at this conceptual formula, if the between groups variance gets larger, then the overall value of F will be greater than one, and the more between groups variance, how much it will be even bigger than one, and go and so forth. So that's sort of the conceptual idea of how we play off these two types of variance in an ANOVA test. Let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. All right, finally, just want to throw out a couple other vocabulary terms that are often associated with ANOVA and other statistical tests. And I just want to make sure you get comfortable with them. The first is the term factor. Uh, the word factor is thrown out, you know, what are the factors that lead to drug use? What are the factors that lead to somebody joining a game? What are the factors, blah, blah, blah. Factor we use a lot, but in statistics, we want to make sure that we have a very clear understanding of what the word factor means. Factor, simply put, means an independent variable, period. That's it. So if somebody says we had two factors in our study, you go, aha, they're talking about two independent variables. For us, the first ANOVA that we will talk about is called a single factor ANOVA. So we know, aha, there is going to be one independent variable in that particular study. A second vocabulary term that we want to make sure we understand is the word level or levels, if it's plural. Level is just a fancy way of saying the categories of an independent variable. And this is one of the things that oftentimes when students are first taking a stats class like ours, where they confuse variables from the categories or the levels. So if my variable is type of offense, and I have three levels, property, drug, and violent offenders within that variable, I wanna make sure I keep those two ideas distinct. The factor would be offense. The levels, three of them, would be property, drug, and violent. So once again, make sure you understand what the difference between factors versus levels. Factor is the overall variable, the levels are the categories of that particular variable. So if my factor is gender and I measure it as male, female, transgender with three levels, the factor is gender, the three levels are male, female, transgender. So make sure you're able to keep those um, straight as you go forward. Finally, let's bring up our old friend, the degrees of freedom. We introduced the degrees of freedom when we were looking at the T distribution and the T test. And I stress the fact that the degrees of freedom is closely related to sample size. The degrees of freedom help us to understand the shape of the particular distribution that we're working with. The degrees of freedom help us to uh, illustrate to other researchers or audience 
that may read our findings, some information about the size of the particular sample we're working with. Same idea goes with the F distribution. So when we're working with ANOVA and the F distribution, we still have to measure and consider degrees of freedom. But because the F distribution focuses on variance, and because there are two important types of variance within the F distribution, between groups variance and within groups variance, we're now going to have two degrees of freedom. So when we move on to our next lecture and start looking at actual SPS output, you'll notice that we want to make sure that we are not just reporting a single number for the degrees of freedom, but we're going to report two degrees of freedom. So the two types of degrees of freedom we're going to report is we will report what is known as a DF between, a degrees of freedom for the between uh, variance, as well as a DF within, the degrees of freedom for the within groups variance. And that should get us ready to start looking at our first ANOVA, which will be our next lecture. So take care.